I'm Tim Deeks. Welcome to the pathway to homelessness. How many times have you walked past some of the most vulnerable in the community and wondered what events in their life have caused them to fall into hardship? Who's to say if you or I would have been any different if we were to face similar circumstances? At the end of the day, we are all human and we all have a pathway. So let's start walking. So obvious question, what is your name? Jasmine. Jasmine, and where did you grow up? Perth, Western Australia. Yeah? Yeah. And when did you move to Melbourne? Uh, well, I came across Victoria about 10 years ago, but Melbourne, in the city I've been here, maybe just over a year. Yeah. And like, I was in an apartment, but the rent just got too expensive, like, because I lost my job and everything. I couldn't really afford to go anywhere so lost that and I've been to like the crisis centre to launch housing Wimmera and basically I got a month from launch housing in a hotel I got a couple weeks from the crisis centre but then told a six to eight month wait on housing at the moment so I am on Centrelink and like when I get that I get Four nights in the hostel, a little bit of phone credits and food, and then I'm stuck doing this the rest of the fortnight. So it doesn't do bugger all when you're out in the streets. What was your childhood like? Not the best. I mean, like, my mum was there until I was six, and then she left with my sister, and, like, I got left behind because when she had to leave, it was in a hard time, and Dad actually had me with with him and so when my mum left he only took my sister so I was stuck with an abusive dad for like 12 and a half years Mm. like I very rarely got to go to school or anything like that and basically wasn't allowed to leave the house really so that sucked I mean I didn't get to do primary school or high school or anything like that and I got away two weeks after my 18th birthday and it was finally when one of the neighbours called the cops because of the screaming coming from the house that I actually got away. But, like, I tracked mum down on Facebook and my sister and sort of tried to get things going. I mean, like, I did my year 8 to 12 equivalency in six months through TAFE and I started a job in the kitchen. Things were going good and, like, my sister passed away and that's when I was out of state, so that's when I ended up moving back here and... Yeah, sort of just been having trouble with my life, sort of. When you say you were trapped, um, what way did he trap you? Like, basically, all the doors would be, like, locked 24-7. Like, my room was dead bolted. It had the bars on the outside of the window. I've had near enough as many broken bones than I am old. Like, and... I that was, was caused by him? And he wouldn't take me to the hospital, but his mum, my nan, was actually a nurse. Anything that used to happen, she used to come to the house and, like, just fix me up. She'd, like, put my arm in a sling or something and tell me that she can't do anything because she was scared of him as well. I mean, like, he was a bad person. And it sucks because no one in his family wants to dob him into the police or tell anyone because... He's, they're scared he's going to do something to them. He's bipolar, schizophrenic, so, like, I can sort of understand, but yeah. to actually sit there and not do anything, they left me there because they knew that if I was there, at least they weren't taking it out. He wasn't taking it out on them, basically. And that's what it came up to in court when everything was brought down to it. And, like, court sort of supersized with them more over than anything. I mean, like, because they had to see what he had done. Everything he'd done to my mum before she had left, everything that happened to me and everything. And basically, yeah, the court said what she done was fine. She didn't get in trouble, but he got sentenced to eight and a half years in jail. Yep. So, yeah, that was lucky, but I don't know. I never, I always thought I would not end up in this, like, the way I grew up, like, I wanted to change so much and yet somehow I still ended up like this, even much as I didn't want to. It's just I had no real support network. <laughs> what did you want to be when you were a kid growing up? Chef. A chef? 
well, I had to cook for myself ever since I was six, so, like, I love being in the kitchen. I mean, like, it's good. I mean, like, one of the things where I used to work, it was a dark chocolate chili Tim Tam cheesecake, and everyone used to look at me weird because I put the chili in it. But it wasn't, like, to make it spicy or anything. It just left a warm after in the back of your mouth and everything. It was really good. I mean, like, I got to experiment with heaps of food. I mean, like, that was the only thing that was good. There was always food in that house, but I was always the one that cooked. That was the only wow. thing that was consistent and good was the food. And that was because I made it. Your first experience with homelessness, how did that happen? I lost my job and like, I had to wait six months in between leaving my job before they gave me a Centrelink payment. I did try applying for other jobs at the time, but I just didn't get one. So now I'm homeless and that. Like I lost my apartment after five months, I think of that. And yeah, basically I've been, couldn't just get anywhere. I couldn't afford to get anywhere myself and that. So yeah, would have been. Yeah, it'd be going on six and a half, seven months. I've been sort of out and about, but for the first month and a half, like, I couch surfed in that before I really fell on the streets. And then, yeah, when it surfaces, got a month and a couple of weeks and everything. So, yeah, I'd go with seven months. Well, technically five and a half months because in the first month and a half, I was bouncing around from place to place. I would yeah. say I was actually homeless then, but, yeah. What was the, the job that you were doing when you came to Melbourne? Well, I was doing apprenticeship in the kitchen, so I got transferred over to Maloney's restaurant because, like, the person I was doing my um, apprenticeship with, they actually had another mate that owned a restaurant over here, so they ended up lining up, because so, I wanted to be with mum and that, they ended up lining up to transfer me over. I actually finished my apprenticeship there, and they ended up hiring me as the head chef for that, like, first few months. But then, I don't know, everything sort of just came tumbling down. I don't know what really happened. Like, I thought I was doing great at work. I mean, like... When you lost your job, what did that do to you emotionally? Well, at first, I didn't think much of it. I thought, yeah, I'll, I'll get back on my feet. Everything would be fine. And it wasn't until, like, two months in that I really started stressing about things because I had bits of savings saved up and everything. And yeah, it wasn't until about two months in where I started panicking and stressing on what I was going to do. And, like, it hurt because mum was staying with me at this point as well. So I was looking after the both of us. I mean, like, my mum still doesn't get any payment at all. So it makes it hard when you're trying to support two people. And, and obviously dealing with the loss of your sister as well. It sucks. Yeah. I mean, like, it's... Good that I'm not out here by myself. I do have my mum, but like when it's like this, and I don't, we don't make enough. At least like one of us will be in a hostel no matter what, and it makes me feel better knowing that at least I can get her in somewhere because she's not well, and she took things a lot worse than I did. So I want her to be okay. Yeah. So. Do you remember where you were? on the first night that you became homeless, where you slept, and what that experience was like? Yeah, it was down in front of Pulling Street Station, and I didn't even have a blanket or anything, and no one stopped or anything to ask how I was going or anything like that, and it absolutely froze, because <laughs> I remember I didn't have much really on me, and like, Mum and I just sat, near the Flinders Street station all night and just sort of hanging where the Lord of the Fries thing is there, at least just sort of sat back in there and tried to stay away from the wind and everything. And it sucked. Never felt so low until that point. I mean, like, to actually be stuck out here and have no one to be able to call on and no one cares normally when you're sitting down. Sometimes people stop and ask how you're going or anything like that. I mean, being out here, I've had hot coffee thrown at me, glass bottles thrown at me, I've been kicked, I've had my stuff stolen. People don't care. It's very rare that you actually get a good person that will stop and talk to you or go get you something. Like, it doesn't happen much. Mm. I mean, like, you could have 
three thousand people walk past you in a day, and there can be dates where you can make maybe eight, make eight dollars or something. You know, and it's just like think maybe if one in every ten person even just put one dollar in my hat, I would have enough to probably get a week in a hostel, and that's like one dollar, and like that's not even every person, but no one mm. really cares. What do you think the barrier is to you getting another job? Obviously, you know. There's a lot of, we're in the city in Melbourne, there's a lot of really different restaurants. What, what do you think it is that's stopping you from? Well, I'd love to know because when you're on Centrelink, you have to look for work with the job network, otherwise you don't get paid. And my job network sets up interviews. But as soon as I see the fact that I am homeless, I don't even get given five minutes of time. I pretty much get told next, don't want to see you. And it sucks. I can sort of understand where they're coming from, working in the kitchen and hygiene and everything, but like, I would try twice as hard and make sure I got there on time. I mean, it's not like there isn't services I can go to and have a shower. I mean, like, I can go to the living room and the salvos. There's showers up at the um, markets, libraries, everywhere. But they don't even give you a chance. You kind of touched on it, but what, is, what are some of the, the crazy things that have happened while you've been in this position? I think the worst thing was, like, was when I had my like, backpack bed. Mum and I had the backpack bed for turning square. We had it set up in the church over here, but you can't fit all your stuff in it. We woke up halfway through the night with all our stuff gone. We walked past a group of people going up from South Coast the next day and we saw all our stuff. And I turned around and didn't want to fight or anything. I just turned around and asked Nancy, can I just please have my ID back? They turned around and laughed at us and said they had already got rid of somebody. And it's like, other homeless people that's doing that to you. And I reckon that's the worst thing is homeless people who hurt, like, ripping off other homeless people. Or you got people that work, at, a lot of people that are around in the city that tend to be homeless and sit down and they can give people such bad name. For sure. And I think you're absolutely on the money. What are some of the lessons that you've learned while you've been on the street? Well, like, just not to take things for granted and, like, I know I did have some savings in that put away, but definitely next time don't spend money on stupid things like upgrading your TV like every now and again or getting the latest laptop or newest phone when it comes out. Do not spend money on stupid shit like that when really I could be saving putting it away and doing something good with it. I mean, like, the amount of when I look back on the amount of money I wasted on upgrading everything when it first came out and what were they changed, maybe a couple of megapixels in a camera or you get a new editor or something like that. There's not really that much difference. And you go out and spend another thousand dollars on it. It's silly. <laughs> that's one, I think that's one thing that I've, I've learned from being out here. Don't waste your money. Don't do that. It's not worth it. How much of your past experience when you were really young, a lot younger, do you think has led you to become homeless? Oh, to be honest, I didn't, I don't really know who, like, to be honest, I honestly thought that I would not be like that. Cause like with that in the back of my head all the time, I always told myself, I'm not gonna let that happen. But I, I don't know. I think just maybe my anxiety and everything got to me and now, like, I guess I wasn't very social and opened up very much with very many people. I mean, like, that's probably one of the biggest things is I don't open up with people or anything like that. Do the people that you grew up with in Perth, do they know about the scenario that you're, you're in now? Like, I'm really serious. Like, basically, it was only his family or his weed dealer that came to the house. I literally didn't... Didn't make friends, yeah. Like... It was me, his family, and his weed dealer when they came. That was it. Yeah. Anybody. Yeah. And I never really thought I was really worth much or anything. And probably the worst thing is, I spent a lot of time thinking, why did my mum take me when she took my sister? I mean, like, what I was explaining, it made sense, but I had a lot of that eating me up. And, of course. And that's the, I wish I had known what circumstances yeah. left. Yeah. That just made me question myself and made me think, what was wrong with me? Why can not she take me with her? And yeah. Yeah. That ate at me. And it still does. 
the life we just, I know like why she done it now, but it eats at me a lot, even though I don't want it to. Of course. Take a seat. I'm so sorry to make you sad. I, that's the last thing that I wanted to do. You're actually making me want to cry. What do you want your your future to be? If you could wave a magic wand, what would you want? I don't know. I just want to be normal, really. I just want to have normal place to go home. Just be happy for once. Like, I don't know really what I want to do. I just want to be normal, whatever that is these days. But, yeah, I just want to be somewhere, just, I don't know, actually do something for myself and not think about what everyone else wants to do. Just get back another job in the kitchen. Other than that, I don't know. I just want to travel and do some things, like, when I'm older, but I just want to be normal. Do you mind me asking how old you are? I'm 29. Life's a bitch, but it can only get better from where I am. I mean, like, I don't know. I just wish more people really took notice of what's going on and didn't, like, put a stereotype on with every homeless person. I mean, like. I was going to ask you that. What What do you think's something to do with homelessness that a lot of people don't understand? What's a misconception that people have about people that are going through a similar situation to you? Okay, like, there's so many people that think like I'm going to rob them or something or like that, that we're no good and we're going to go stay away from us because we're trouble. Like, I've had families walk past and their little kids will go to us like, oh, what's she doing there? And she goes, oh, you stay away from those people. They are bad people. Don't talk to them. And it's like, it makes you feel this big. They have no idea why we're out here. And people just don't care. They just seem to think that homeless people are like these scary people that have obviously done something wrong to be here and they're gonna hurt you and like that's it like 